Hello, Keith Ruck here at VintageMachinery.org. So, time to start back on the lathe. We've got the uh, apron here. It's been soaking for a couple of days in, uh, in this uh, uh, paint remover. Looks like it's still mostly dried, but it's still a little bit wet, but that's probably fine. We're gonna see if we can get this off. So in the past, I had real good luck with the citrus strip. And see there's a I know where that goes. Put that there. What I'm gonna do is just take a brush here and a wire brush and just start scrubbing. probably let this sit a couple days too long. I just haven't had a chance to get back out here. But it's coming off. Paint's coming right off. Just gonna take some elbow grease. Uh, so I'll tell you what, let me do this and we'll be back in a few minutes and let you see what it looks like. So we did a little scrubbing, a little elbow grease. Uh, got all that old paint off. I took it over to my parts washer and uh, we did some more scrubbing and cleaning in there. Uh, and this is what I ended up with. It come out really nice. You know, I pretty much got all the paint off of it. Uh, and while I had it in the parts washer, I went ahead and cleaned out the gear case real well. Uh, also on the back here, um, turn it around, you can see, just basically degreased all that. Got all the old stuff off of there, all the old uh, grease and grime. I uh, had some questions about this red paint in the back. So, well, was the lathe painted red at some time? Well, this red paint is actually uh, just a seal coat that you'd often see use. The same thing that's like on the inside of the headstock. And uh, this was just something to seal this casting up. Uh, the oil would, wouldn't really stick to this real bad. Uh, it would run off of it, wouldn't soak into the casting. So, uh, this is really in parts that. Uh, wouldn't be seen. So this isn't even a primer coat. This is just kind of a in a, you know areas that, that wouldn't be seen on the lathe. But you wanted to put a seal coat on it. But the way it is now, uh, I'm happy. And I think what we're going to do is go ahead and uh, lay this thing down. And I'm going to get my tape, my masking tape. Uh, start taping up the areas that I don't want to paint, and I uh, get this thing primed and or prepped for painting. All right, I think we're ready to start painting. And we'll just put a nice, uh, good coat of gray paint on here. I really like brushing um, cast iron as opposed to spraying it. You can just get a nice thick coat on this. It just goes right down into those uh, pores in the casting and uh, this really makes for a nice coat of paint. Uh, I got asked in the last painting I did, how many coats did I do? Well, the nice thing about when you brush a paint job on like this is that, quite honestly, really all you need is one good coat because you're putting on a lot more thickness of paint than you are when you're spraying. So uh, there's really not a need to build up multiple coats you can just get it all on at one time. Now, you know, with that said, you may, after you get through, come back and uh, need to touch up or whatever in places. Um, and brushing too, it's kind of self-leveling. So, you know, if you got some uh, little uh, places in the casting, you know, it just kind of fills all in. And uh, I just, I, anyway, I like brushing castings rather than spraying them. That's my personal preference. Your mileage may vary. All right, we'll let that dry. So with the main apron all uh, painted up now, this is actually the little lever that mounts on the side of that, that engages the spindle. And uh, I need to get it. It was not originally on there, this was taken off. 
Uh, and in a previous step, I figured out why they had taken off because they didn't have a shaft on their right. Uh, but we're going to reinstall this. I have the part, so it needs to be partially disassembled. And uh, it's got a tapered pin here uh, holding in a piece. Let me see if we can knock that out. That came right out. Good deal. That comes off. I'm going to leave the rest of this like it is, I think. And um, probably do it off camera, but um, and it'll probably take me a little while to do it. I got some other stuff I'm going to probably get stripped up and let this soak for a day or two, or overnight anyway, and then we'll get this cleaned up. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to start working on uh, cleaning up uh, some of these uh, smaller parts and probably just going to use the wire wheel on the grinder uh, to strip the paint off of these and uh, we'll show you a little bit of that action. When I was working on the project to repair the uh, half nut cam, I had a lot of people comment, well, you're not through. You didn't drill the, the hole for the uh, tapered pin and reinstall the tapered pin. And you're right, I didn't. And the reason was because I needed to get it positioned properly um, on the shaft. And so th this was done off camera, but I basically went and installed this in the apron and uh, ran it through its range and figured out where I wanted my handle position to be. And because it has a set screw in there, I was able to lock that set screw in place. And now it's time to put drill a hole for a tapered pin. Now we've got the original hole, but one thing I've learned when you got to do this is that it is nearly impossible to get a hole drilled perfectly down through that and be right in the center of the old uh, tapered pin. And I just, I'm not even going to try. We're just going to drill a new hole and um, install a new tapered pin and that way we'll have a nice clean hole all the way through and everything will just work better. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take probably some JB weld, some epoxy, two-part epoxy. We'll fill these old holes in so that it will look nice. It won't fill up with crud and what have you. Uh, so anyway, we're over on the mill now. I've got this part centered up. Uh, we had to get kind of clunky with this setup here uh, just because we got this big cam piece in the back, a short little section here of round. So I put a V-block in the in the vise and I'm just clamping down on the V-block and that has got it held in place good and tight. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and start by putting a, a center drill here and uh, talk a little bit about, we'll talk a little bit about tapered pins here in a minute, but then we'll drill and, and ream that hole. So let's go ahead and get this uh, ready to go. Just a spot to get my hole started there. So after not having the right tapered pin the other day when I was working on that other part, I actually went and bought me an, an assortment of tapered pins, so I should be set now. These go from uh, a number one up to, uh, no, actually a number zero, I think up to, yeah, zero to number sixes and got a nice assortment of different sizes. Uh, this thing is backwards from the way it's actually in there. But um, on tapered pin, guys, um, the size, basically, you know, they, they have different sizes. And again, the number zero is the, they actually make them smaller than that, but uh, that's the smallest ones in here. Uh, but the way the tapered pin is, is that the size of the head determines uh, which pin it is or what size it is. And I got my machinery's handbook out here. And number two, it says the large end diameter should be 0.193. It's going to be a little bit below the actual top. And you see we're right on about 194 there. So this is a number two. And then it's going to taper at a quarter of an inch per foot. That's the taper on all these pins. And according, of course, depending on the length of the, of the taper pin, the smaller end is going to get smaller and smaller. The top end is always going to stay the same. Uh, that makes sense. So I know I got a number two. Um, this box here is basically just full of tapered reamers. And um, I bought out a bunch of stuff from a guy one time and he had a pile of tapered reamers. So I got them all in this box. They're all just sorted out where I can go find them when I need them. And uh, I've got a little uh, spiral uh, reamer here. This works real good in the mill for 
uh, using a power to ream it, so power reaming. I also got some hand reamers in here which have uh, straight flutes on them as opposed to the spirals. Uh, if you look, this one has a square head on the top, kind of like a tap that says, hey, this is a hand reamer. You use a hand, you put it in a, you put it in a tap handle to turn that one, whereas this one here, you know, it just goes up in a drill chuck. So we're gonna go over and drill it. Um, as far as the size to drill, uh, I'm gonna drill it based on, you know, drill a drill that's just a tad larger than the small end of this, this pin. And uh, that will be my starting size. And uh, then I'll ream it out to the actual size that I want. But uh, what we're gonna do here is um, we'll start with a drill bit that's around 167 there. And I think I've got a number nine drill bit. I can't remember the actual size, but I, that's how I sized it. And we're gonna go drill it now. We're ready to drill. I said over there it was a number nine. This is actually a number 19 drill bit, which is 0.166. Uh, but we'll just go right down that uh, hole that we started the dimple there, and we'll just drill it all the way through. Now we'll switch over to our reamer. And I'm gonna slow the bill down a little bit. I'm gonna give it a little squirt of, uh, it's actually tap magic. And uh, We'll just kind of go down through here and that should start reaming out that hole. All right, my reamer's just coming out the bottom. And what I want to do now is just kind of start test fitting this. And my pin is not quite going through the bottom yet. So we're gonna take it on just a little bit deeper. Have to be very careful with this. A little bit of depth will go a long way toward driving that pin in there. So go on baby A little bit more. That's going through the bottom. I don't know if you can see that or not. Uh, we're just gonna leave it like that right now. Once I install this, or I may actually do it before install, we'll actually trim that down so that the pin is not, it's kind of more or less flush with it on either side. Uh, but that's good for now. That pin is set. And uh, we'll fill these in with some JB Weld, uh, get this handle painted, and it'll be ready to go back on the, on the lathe. So I think it's time to start putting the apron back together now after all the work we've done to it, getting it prepped and ready. And we've got all the other parts, I think, prepped and ready to go back on. And I think the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and put the uh, oil reservoir uh, back in here while I got turned up this way. Uh, and basically it's just held in by a couple of screws. So we'll uh, go ahead and tighten these back up. So next the uh, oil pump goes back on. I've taken off some of these uh, screws and so forth on here. We're gonna put these back on now. I'm gonna have to get a wrench. Put the pump back in.
All right. So the next thing I want to do is I want to put my uh, tags back on here. And um, these are the ones we took off and we have restored them now. Uh, pretty happy with the way they look. And what I use for these, these are called little drive screws. And they just basically got a little twist in them. I don't know if you can see that or not. Uh, but they just kind of press down in these holes. They just kind of drop in place. And then you just tap them in with a hammer. And theoretically even, they're supposed to be removable. If I can get them in there. But theoretically, they're supposed to be removable. Uh, but as you saw when I tried to take these off, they were a little tough to get out. Uh, but we got some brand new ones here to go back in. If I can get them started. So, man, I almost need some tweezers to handle these things, but I'm gonna put it right over this hole in my bench block, and I'll just tap that into the hole, and uh, then I can nail them in. They'll all be where they need to be. All right, so now, Put those over those holes. I think I'm gonna take a punch and uh, punch these in. All right, we'll do the same thing for this tag up here. The next piece we'll put on is the main hand wheel and uh, spent some time doing some polishing and cleaning on this thing to uh, get it looking nice again. And uh, let's see here. I think that washer was right up underneath there. Tighten that back up. All right, that looks good. I'll go ahead and put the uh, oil filter back in here. I think before I get much else on the front, I'm gonna work on getting this uh, half nut cam back in and get it stuff on the back situated. So I think the first part to go back in here is the actual uh, half nut cam. And uh, if you look at this, it could go you know, either way, but if you, if you look at it real close, there's an oil hole right here in the top and that's where the oil drips down. There's not one, well, there's a drain hole in the bottom, but the one that's bigger is in the top. So that is the side that goes up. So I'm gonna drop that in there. And right in here is kind of its normal position, but for the, if you look at these uh, actual, uh, the half nuts, they go down in here, there's a pin. And this pin, this pin right here will follow in this little groove and open and close. But for it to go in to start with, it has to be, in a position about like this. And once it kind of drops down in there, this piece has to turn. And when it turns, it'll capture that and pull it on down. So I'm gonna go ahead and position it about like such. And we can go ahead now, I'm gonna put a little oil in here in these ways. Let the half nuts uh, slide up and down on. Go ahead and oil that real good. And if I remember right, this top one is tight. It's probably gonna to have to, once it gets down in here, it moves a little bit better, but it's just a little tight up there at the top. Let's see, where's my dead blow hammer or my... All right, before we put the half nuts in, there's this little rod right here that fits up in here. And this basically engages into a little slot uh, on this shaft here. And it's a lockout. It basically keeps this thing, uh, it keeps the half nut from being able to engage when you have your feet engaged. So that's got to drop in there and it will go down this little groove right here 
up. We're just locked out. It's in the lock position right now. It's out. I'm going to have to move it. But let me go ahead uh, and kind of get that going down. And tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and put this bottom one in. All right, that one's up in there. Let me tilt this thing forward. And what's got to happen again is this uh, little shaft back here, it's got to be in the neutral position. I'm going to go ahead and squirt some oil all down in here. You know, we've washed this thing out with the, on the parts washer, so it's uh, more or less dry right now. And I want to make sure we got this thing lubed up real good. But uh, that should be in the neutral position. It is, and that little rod is now back. I'm going to take my soft flow. All right, it's down now. So I think what I need to do now is come around the other side and put my handle on, and we can try this thing out. So let me turn this back around. All right, we should have that set. And I also want to tighten up the set screw on the bottom. So if you remember, we're not into the actual um, cam yet. So we're going to have to kind of get this thing turning. And if I remember right from when I did this before, it's a tight fit. There it goes. All right. So now you can see the half nuts opening and closing, which is just what we want right there. And that all looks good. Uh, this little oiler here, I had bent this earlier to kind of get out of the way, but it just kind of, oil goes through here and it just kind of drops right down on there from this oiler up here. So that's now back where it's supposed to be. So the next piece to go on is going to be um, this little shifting rod, and this one is for uh, reversing uh, the, the, the feeds. Um, so let me put a little oil on this shaft. We'll go ahead and put it in one of the holes. Really doesn't matter which one. I'm going to go around to the back side now. All right, here's our shaft coming out. And we got this little piece here. It kind of fishes up underneath here and goes on the shaft. Hmm, may have to pull it back out a little bit to get it to line up. Yeah, there we go. And there's a taper pin in that that will hold all that together and we have to get it lined up. There it starts. I get my hammer and tap that in. I think that's fine. Again, let me uh, put some oil on this. And It fits right down in here. There we go. All right, so back up here. Uh, this piece won't go in with this in the bottom, so uh, I pulled that back out. 
and we're going to put this in first. That's engaged, and uh, let's see this gear. Let me get my flashlight. I can see what I'm doing. This gear will go back on this side. A tapered pin and a set screw on this. I showed in the last video, so it's hard to get in here and see this guy. So just uh, if you want to see it, go back and look at that other video. And now for the uh, shifting rod here, this little uh, brass piece fits back behind it. Uh, there it goes. And now we got to do a little fishing. This has got to come up and into that brass or into that brass piece. I know I'm in your way, guys. Um, this is just awkward to get to back here. I'm gonna have to uh, move the camera and just get this done. All right, guys, uh, I got it back together and uh, it didn't happen on camera. I'm gonna tell you, this thing is extremely aggravating. So what you have to do is get this shifting fork that goes down through this piece into this linkage behind it and get it engaged in this part that slides back and forth. And there is one little position that it'll just all go together. And I spent about 45 minutes fiddling with this thing. And I can't tell you how I did it. I don't know that I could do it again if I had to. Uh, but it just kind of all magically fell into place. And once it got in there, I, was, I wasn't taking it back out to put it on camera because uh, I'm not sure I could have done it. But I've got it back together. Uh, if you got to do one of these, God bless you. <laughs> uh, uh, th this was aggravating, but we got it. We got the backside. This is all back together now, and uh, that's just going to be where it's at. So let's get back to the front. Turn this thing around, and I got tools scattered all over the place now, um, and finish on it. So right about now, I'll tell you, I'm glad I had uh, been recording this because when I went to put this part back together, I couldn't remember exactly how it came apart. So I went back in and watched my video. So there's a little uh, bushing here that goes on. It's got a little keyway in it. And on the back side back here, you can't see there's a little pin that that key uh, goes into. So there it goes. So that fits right there. Um, next thing we'll do here is we got the actual um, handle. And there's a couple things going on here. First off, there's this little um, cam in the top and that's where uh, set screw comes in from the top that has a dog point in it and as you turn this it moves it in and out and that's what adjusts that gear in there that uh, engages the feed so um, let's see I'm gonna put a little oil on this and at the same time on the bottom of this uh, there's a couple of detents there's a little ball bearing that comes in the bottom that will uh, catching those detents uh, to um, cause it to um, um, catch in different places. So there's three stops. So I think at this point in time, what I've got to do is set this thing up and get the pressure off of that. So hang on one second. So to hold this all on now, uh, we got a little bushing with the tapered pin that should line up right there and tap that in place all right that's good now again in that top we have that little cam piece and uh, we got this little dog-eared set screw so this has got a little uh, point down the bottom that engages in that cam so let me get this uh, going in here I'm hitting the thing there. Now I got to do is find my uh, hole. There it is. I think I'm in it right there, maybe. Yeah, that's looking good. That's going to go down till it bottoms out and then probably back off just a little bit. So I'm back off now. So that. Again, so now that's 
engaging the part in the back, which is exactly what I want. All right, and there's a set screw that comes in from the side that just kind of holds all that in place. So we'll put that back in. Now I showed you a little ball detent in the bottom. So there's a little ball bearing here. Um, and that's going to go in this hole in the bottom. And then behind that is this little piece here. It has a spring and a little keeper uh, that goes up underneath that. And then there's a set screw in the bottom that is used to tighten that up. And get that started. We'll tighten that up. I can see my part moving around now where that ball is uh, catching. So and now it's got positive stops up and down. I'm going to get that pretty tight right there. Yeah, I like that. So now that's all properly adjusted. The last part to go on here is uh, this little housing that goes on the side. This is the part that actually was had been removed from the lathe when I got it. Um, because it wasn't put together properly the last time. There's two pins. Goodness, I'm going to have to touch that up with some more paint. i got to get that right there anyway. I see some missed spots, but uh, a couple of uh, socket cap screws that go in here. I had to order some new hardware because uh, this was all missing, uh, but no big deal. Put those in. All right, that's all together now. And we got one more handle to put on here and I think we will be through putting this back together. Be right back. And here's our handle. I've got that hole partially aligned, but it's not quite where I can get my pin down there. So I'm just gonna take a uh, tapered punch here. We'll run down in there. And that should get everything aligned and there we go there we go and that lever's on when you move that it turns this little piece down here about a quarter of a turn and that's what uh reverses uh the direction of the lead screw and the uh and the feed rod on the lathe. So. so there you go guys, the apron is all back together. All been restored, gone through, repainted, cleaned up, de-rusted, re-oiled, decredified, <laughs> all those good things. And uh, it is now ready to go back onto the lathe. So we're making headway guys. Uh, Probably what I'm going to do is, uh, before we put this back on, I want to get the, the saddle uh, all cleaned up, painted, and get it ready to go back on because once I get the saddle, once I get put this on, I want to connect it to the saddle to get the weight off of those uh, rods just as quick as I can. Um, and we'll probably prop this up in the meantime, what have you, but uh, that'll be in our next episode. We'll go ahead and get this installed and uh, probably go ahead and get the cross slide and all that stuff done in the next episode as well. I'm guessing, we'll see where we end up. Uh, but we're making headway, we're getting it done. Uh, and hopefully before long, we'll be making some chips on this lathe. So with that, uh, that'll be a wrap on this video. Uh, as always guys, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for your comments. Uh, thanks for, if you haven't, please subscribe, hit the subscribe button. Uh, give me a like on this, thumbs up and uh, share it on social media. Uh, it's a good way to spread word about the channel. So if you got a Facebook account or whatever, Instagram, Twitter, whatever you do, I don't do anything much but Facebook myself, but uh, you can share this video there where others can see it. And uh, that'll help get the channel out where other people can find it. So with that, we'll talk to you later, and we're going to get this uh, LeBlanc lathe going soon.